will be defined as the punishment of execution administered to someone convicted of a capital crime. But what happens when innocent people are wrongly executed? When the death penalty violates our human rights laws and the cost of executions are a lot more than the cost of life in prison. The fact is that these things actually are going on. My group and I are here to debate for against death penalty and prove why death penalty is wrong.
I didn't know someone do. You, you do kill someone in a sense. But with today's technology, with DNA testing and other methods of crime scene, science can now effect, effect, effectively eliminate all uncertainty as to a person's guilt or innocence. So we are for it 100% if the person is guilty without reasonable doubt. Okay, in the US, the inmates typ typically spend over 10 years awaiting execution. Why? Because of the appeal process. In this process, the person may have a death sentence reversed, be sentenced or less, or be sentenced on a lesser offense. So we feel that that is enough time for an innocent person to be built a case if they are innocent. ban against cruel and unusual punishment. And the state shouldn't get its right to given shouldn't give a right to kill human beings, especially when they premeditated and it's the whole ceremony to kill someone. And you guys are saying that it gives closures for the families. What about the family of the person that you're killing? <laughs> My thing is you can't do something you can't do something like you can't just tip for tat just because they do something wrong and they commit a murder or they do something you are we already know that why can't they be in jail and just they can be in jail for life and get that and get their stuff together instead of just spending two million dollars to have them executed it really doesn't solve anything and you say it will never happen again. What about the people that change? It was said that 56% of the people that come out of jail or have to totally different lives. They, they change totally. Because when they're in there, they're, they're suffering and they're realizing what they've done. <coughs> somebody that committed murder or homicide will be let out of jail. And the thing with life without parole is the people in jail, they have to suffer with problems of rape, have to suffer with problems of unpaid labor, have to suffer with, okay, they might get a free meal, but the, you might get beaten to death. So it's, it's probably be brutaler, it might be more brutal to stay in jail than to just get executed or just, just get sentenced to capital punishment, okay. From 1992 to 2008, the numbers of prison for life without parole tripled from 12,453 to 41,095. Now think about how it is, that's from 2011. Think about 2012 and all the crimes that's going on now. We already have a big problem with overpopulation in prison, so think about this. If, these, if the people that commit these bad crimes, if they just went through capital punishment, Think about all the extra money we can go through. They can go to schools, can go to hospitals, things like that. And with um, going out outside and changing, most of these people are mentally incompetent, which means when they go out of jail, some people, okay, most of the people that have been sent to death row, they were born to kill. That's how they, that's how they just explain them, because they done did so many killings, it just, Oh, I have to go up and I have to wake up and kill somebody else today. I don't think if you stay in jail with people who hate you and people that try to kill you, you're just gonna go outside wanna go out of jail and do more things. So getting out of jail we wouldn't want to let a person who's killed somebody out of jail do the same thing because people have escaped out of jail before. They don't take they don't take slip. <coughs> My opponent is saying that we have to kill them to stop overpopulation <laughs> in jails. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
if the death penalty was working, we wouldn't have overpopulations in jail. Why are we still using the same methods from centuries beginning to solve problems? It's not working. Crime is evolving every day, and we have to find a way to reform the penitentiaries and the jail system, not just kill people. All that does is instill violence. If someone was to kill my cousin, and I said, I'm going to kill that person because they killed my cousin, isn't that righteous execution? Isn't that justice? They killed my family, why not kill theirs? Why is it not okay in society for us to do that, but is it okay in the higher courts to do that? We teach our children, an eye for an eye is not what we should do. Two wrongs don't make a right. But every day we show by killing other people that it is okay to murder. Killing people does not solve the problem. It teaches revenge. It weakens and destroys natural honor of bloodshed. And it facilitates and ensures the escape of guilty people from punishment by human law. He said that they may be killed in prison, they may be beat in prison, they may be raped in prison. Okay, so if you want that person to pay for what they did, then why not put them in prison for the rest of their life? I'm sure that would be a worse punishment than being killed. It's like a child saying, I'd rather get a spanking right now than to deal with the punishment. Is a scapegoat, is an easy out. Don't allow people to have an easy out. Mm. Make them pay life in prison. <laughs> You better, you better come with it. Well, my opponent is saying here that it's an easy way out, or it's a punishment for them to be in jail. You think prison is a punishment for Craig serial killer? What's gonna stop them from killing while they're in prison? What's gonna stop them from killing other prisoners? You got, you can break necks, you can make weapons out of plastic. The guards can't protect these prisoners especially these lifers who have nothing to lose with people who have lesser sentences. Mm. Lifers have nothing to lose. They can keep killing what they're gonna do. We're gonna give you another life. We're gonna give you another life. They already got life. You can't do <laughs> nothing else. So if they keep killing, <laughs> we're gonna resolve from that. It's gonna be more prisoners dead. You want 30,000 prisoners dead or one person dead? Mm. And they say that it costs more. Execution costs more, right? Yeah, in the beginning, but in the long run, it actually costs more to keep prisoners in jail. Mm. You got feed them health care. You got to give them health care, feed them, secure them. Cali costs 40, 47000 per year. Pull out your calculator. I'm ready. Oh, okay. I'm putting okay. it back in. It costs taxpayers $2.3 million per execution. Okay? And it costs taxpayers $700,000 to keep an inmate in prison. And as of April 2012, there are eight, 308 inmates on death row. That will cost the taxpayers $708.8 million to kill. Okay? But there are roughly 8,558 inmates doing life in prison. And that will cost the taxpayers about $5.99 billion. Wow. So does it cost more to kill one person? Yes, it does. But we are spending a lot more to keep these 8,558 people alive. Mm. Life don't cost that much. My opponent spoke about death row people, inmates, killing other inmates. Well, wouldn't this stop the overpopulation in prison? <laughs> you're not gonna have to pay for health care, and you're definitely not gonna have to pay to feed them because they just killed them. So, I mean, next thing I need to say is the states that actually have death penalties, the crime rates are higher, which makes more people go to prison. If you, the states that have done away with the death penalty, their crime rates are lower. Really? We will not 
have as many inmates in prison. We will not have as much high cost if we do away with the death penalty. So yeah, you may say it costs a lot, but you contradicted yourself. They're killing each other in prison. You're giving them more life. Well, then there's no overpopulation. And plus, jails are segregated. They're not going to put offenders in there with lesser offenders. They actually have a system to separate their inmates so that those tragedies do not happen. So those who are actually being killed in prison who are on a life row are other lifers. Mm. Well, sure, the cost of the death penalty up front, it may cost a little bit more, but all those lifers, guess what? They don't sit there and say, well, you know what, Amela? Hmm, I'm just going to sit here. They appeal, they appeal, they appeal, they appeal, so they die. So they have unlimited appeal, way more than what the inmates on death row have. Because guess what? They eventually get executed. We stop spending money once they're executed. But if they continue to spend life, they continue to appeal until they die. So to say that the cost is more for the death penalty, that's simply not true. You have to factor in everything. Huh. Because when you don't factor in the appeals for the lifers, you miss it half the cost. Mediator? Do you have any questions for each other? No. Can we ask questions? Yeah. My opponent says that it decreases jail population to kill others, but what proof on that do you have? Like, do you have the population of each jail that increases? We have, how many jails do we have in the U.S.? Five. <laughs> 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 we have, have 3,200 jails to at least 4,000 jails in the U.S. for each state. So, like, you tell me that it decreases population? We have enough. Do you have a report? Statistics? Are you saying that? <laughs> 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 Anything? Okay. Okay, I like <laughs> Okay. I like to ask, okay, compared to how many how many jails that you said there are, how much more are they spending on jails and schools? How many more jails are they still building instead of schools? And if the United States wanna get rid of our education problem, we're not number one. Probably ch it's China from what I know of. So, okay, it's, we might have that amount of jails, but I, didn't, I don't think you knew that 60% of jails are, over, are more populated than they were built to be, to be. So I think that's overpopulation. I've seen pictures of people having to be in little beds in each other in big rooms. That's not how it was supposed to be. Okay, so, okay, and the lesser offenders and the higher offenders, Okay, I'm pretty sure they all go outside at one point because they have to go outside to do anything. Not every, not everybody's like in the block or whatever, like in the little cell thing. Okay, let me go back to the point of the, the person that was sent on death row in Texas yesterday. From starting crimes from the age of three, a lot of your mother's bed on fire. From going into a pastor's church who had a whole loving family, his whole his whole objective of life was to help people, to save them. This man, Stephen Nelson, walked into the church because he was angry at the pastor from his word and suffocated him with a bag over his head and just left him there with his family to see him. How is that? How do? We, why, do why would we want somebody like that back in public again? If he had life, if he had life without parole, his what if his family had got him out of jail again? He'd been doing crime since the age of three. Don't you think you think he would actually change? If he was in jail for 20 years, he'd been in and out of jail his whole life. I don't think that would change. He would change and not want to kill. He'd probably have one of his friends, one of his goons, to kill his whole family. <laughs> you should know how Texas is. Everybody does things together. That's why, if you think about mafia members, if they go to jail, life without parole, they can get contact with somebody, I want you to whack this person, I want you to whack that person. They'll do that to people in the legal system that put them down. Life without parole is not the way to go, especially since how all the mafia and crew members are today. They know technology just like we do, so that's not a good thing to do.
Questions from the yes. Before, before we get some questions from from, from the audience, I'm gonna ask I'm gonna ask the two groups within one group uh, to tell us uh, what policies do you think uh, we can put in place as a government, state government or federal government, to cut down on uh, capital uh, offenses like murders and, and so forth. What what policies? I know you want people to be killed because they have committed those crimes. I know you don't want to be, to be killed because it's injustice to their rights, right? Mm -hmm. But what can we do to avoid even them to go to jail? Or what can we do so that they cannot reach that extent mm -hmm. of getting to, to be killed? What can we do as a government? I would like to start. Sure. My opponent mentioned that we put more money in jails than we do in schools. This is a society problem. This is a government problem. Yes, we do need to invest more <coughs> money in education so that they can get a decent job, so they do not resort to crime. And they want me to feel sorry for the inmates that are in there in crowded cells. They do not deserve the same liberties that we have. If they have to be in a crowded jail, so be it. Are we, do we have any? Yes, okay. Uh, uh, oh, trust, we don't feel sorry because they land on the floor. What we saying is, we need to put them on death row, inject them, and let them go. And move it on. But what, what, what policy? But what policy? What the, the thing I is, I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't understand. We're not against the people who've been wrong, wrongfully accused. We, I've seen Dallas DNA where they're releasing all these people who've been accused of crimes and getting fifty thousand dollars and things like that. What we're talking about is they if they have this ten year process before they go on death row, that whole time period needs to be spent on how they committed the crime. Are you a hundred percent sure with your evidence, scientific reason? We're not trying to say that. We think that per we need eyewitnesses are not the thing to use. We're talking about technology for the people who did these crimes, visual evidence, things of that sort. Okay, and now I'm gonna. We have given each side at least a, min a minute to to answer the question. I'm gonna ask the audience uh, about two questions. One question. Uh, yeah. Our question is for the people that are against it. Okay, I got a question. After your prisons are released. What, do they, what type of life do they have after that? Because, you know, once you commit a felony, something especially like murder, what kind of job can they get? They can't do nothing for society after that. Nobody will hire them. You might as well just go ahead and kill them off anyway. We're not saying that the people who are murderers in jail need to be released. We're saying that they need to stay in jail so they can learn that lesson. Because 
what like it's like I don't see any cases where like people who are like actual murderers kill so many people that they're out of jail. Most of the people that stay in jail learn their lesson. Like do y'all ever watch A and E or all those lockup shows? Mm -hmm. They they're in there learning their lesson. They're in there getting an the education, reading law books. And when they do get out, the people who like are getting out if they are not murderers, <laughs> they learn their lesson, they do something with themselves and why. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. The death role for us is a form of closure for the victims, and we've had none. Oh. It seems to me that we have a case here. So, his name is Pablo Escobar. Oh, what? Oh. Can you address the question, please? Are you addressing the question? Yeah, he's, he's explaining his okay. question. He's explaining. Anyway, so it was this girl, her, her father had raped her, and she was served, she was served for life, and she kept appealing, kept appealing, and eventually she got 22 years in prison, and when she got out, she went and she went out of her father and killed him. So for y'all to say that that they get out and they're good people, or to me, this is a, a perfect example of how somebody can kill somebody. Uh -huh. But we're not saying they're getting out. We're saying that they deserve the time to stay in jail to think about all the bad things that they committed. So basically, they have no life after committing crime. They need to stay in jail to think about what they did. Yeah. I'm going to ask for I, another question. I, 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 Steven? I got two questions. One question real quick. What you mean her father raped her and she ended up going to jail? I don't, I don't get. How did that? How did that? What you didn't even? I like. Was that the person that killed the two, two year old girl? I don't know, but anyways, he just didn't. He just he threw me off with that. My question is uh, to the uh, to the death row side. Um, y'all talking about how y'all gonna give like closure to the families and things like that, and how. Uh, society, how how that kills the, I mean, the overpopulation in jails and things like that. And I want to know, like he said, what is it that, what is it that y'all can do besides that, besides those things that will uh, help the inmates learn their lesson so that, well, no, 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 no. You know what? Forgive my question. No, I, I want to I I I talk about I want to talk about justice, but uh, I'm just hype. I'm just hype right now. I want to comment. <laughs> okay. Um, no, no I, I'm giving time for the audience to to participate a little. Uh, I was hot. I'm sorry. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. But let me have. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know if y'all understand from uh first uh first forty eight. It was a uh, case where it was these three boys. They burnt these two boys over marijuana or whatever weed, whatever. And so <laughs> I'm just trying to get an uh, understanding. So how many cases do a person have to have for them to get death? Because to me, if you killing somebody, you need to be gone. Like point blank, because if you go in jail, yeah, you're spending time in jail, but some people come out and so I'm not saying they don't, but some people don't learn they listen at all, because they go back, they come back out, and do the same thing. So what? So y'all saying how money is spent on you know just too much money is spent on uh, the inmates being in jail? But what happens to the people that come out of jail and they still do the same thing? So that's basically saying the money y'all spent on them is pointless. So I'm just trying to get an understanding of the, that situation. Okay. Let's, before you answer that, let me. We're going to answer that in a minute, okay? We're going to answer that. But let, let's get the two questions. Up. My question is for them, too. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Y'all say, um, from, I'm going off of the stats that they had, because I figured it was way more accurate with the numbers that they had, being how it, it costs more to keep people in, in prison. So here's what I'm saying for y'all who are against it. Usually when you have people on death row, my mom used to work at a prison. These are guys that are your far cases, like they're killing people and eating brains and stuff like that. So do you think us on a society outside of prison who are actually doing what we need to do, contributing, should pay more for people who don't even deserve to live after these horrible crimes? Okay, I'm gonna give you about I got a question for real now. So I address those and then you have a rebuttal. And See, then we are done. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're paying for them regardless. Whether we're paying for them to live or we're paying for them to die, we're still paying for them. Amen. Period. Mm -hmm. So money's coming out of our pocket. Now, Shaquille said that about people who are getting out of prison and going back, getting out and going back. We don't want these people to get out of prison. They're not going to get out of prison. We're not talking about repeat offenders. We're talking about people who have committed murders and they're in life without the possibility of parole. They're not getting out. That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about in some cases that they are getting out though. If they have a good lawyer, they are getting out. But what about those who are wrongly killed and they cannot afford the attorneys that the rich people have? Execution is it's racist in a way. Those who it's discriminatory. Who doesn't have enough money? They have a shorter period of time to give their defense. And if their defense is poor, how are they going to plead their case? People who have more money can. Okay. When I go to the rebuttal, okay, okay, all right, okay. The first thing I want to say is that this thing happens with all murder cases, not just death row. This happens in any court case. If you don't have a good lawyer, sucks for you. You are gonna get the worst possible whatever they are gonna give you, like unless you take a plea. Unless you unless you take a plea, yeah. Okay, so and then I want to understand why would y'all? Okay, let's say this. You have a sister, a murderer kills her and chops her up and put her in a bag and tries to sell it. He goes to jail, life without parole, and then you hear that you hear one of the people in jail tell you, all right, we're gonna let him, he think he's changing his mind, we're gonna spend all this money and give him books and let him learn and life without, and life without parole in jail. I don't understand, why would y'all want somebody that kills somebody brutally to like, just enjoy themselves in jail because like people that do that are not mentally stable y'all don't understand that if we saw the people on the streets they'd probably be trying to run around with a knife or something right now they always plot y'all don't understand that so why don't you want somebody in jail to like learn and okay, try um, to come on, you gotta, this uh, hold on wait a minute can I get the floor? Uh, <laughs> 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 they weren't prepared. They, they, we got to close the stage. They had about three minutes. Let, let me get my... Can you do that in one minute? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, we don't close one minute. Close the statement yeah. in one minute. They can close I want to close my no, question. No, 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 we want y'all to go. We're, we're open up. <laughs> we open up. We open up. We open Okay, let's close up. Okay, first of all, as I told... Oh, okay. All right, first of all, as I told the class, we're only for the death penalty with 100% accurate evidence. I know I'm sad about what happened to Troy Davis, but we're only for it if it's 100% accurate. And criminals still remain at large in prison. If you keep these killers in prison and they got connect, oh yeah, go kill his family, go kill his daughter. Go, they sending out letters to whack these people family. Pablo Escobar, he was in a, a prison and he was comfortable in there. He was making calls and he actually escaped with relative ease. And also, I want everybody in here to close their eyes and think for a minute. If you saw your daughter, your mom, your brother, your dad, anybody you love dearly get sliced to itty bitty pieces and ate in a lie, or ate and did, they did now, they sliced up. But uh, <laughs> you see them get ate, you gonna tell me, you gonna want this person to sit in prison? No, I think everybody in here will want this person to did. Okay, okay. Ooh, it's getting heated. Where is the morality in that? The Bible says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. <laughs> so why are we trying to kill people? We don't have the right to do that. There are many reasons why the death penalty should be abolished. It is an act of murder, and it's carried out in a supposedly clinical fashion at the state governor's children. choosing. The government can't be trusted con to control its bureaucrats, collect taxes equitably, or fill a pothole. So what makes you think they should decide when to kill a citizen? Jesus was an innocent man, and he was put to death by the death penalty. If you were on his jury, you would have sentenced him to death. The death penalty is discriminatory and it has nothing to do 
with fixing crime. So do not be too eager to deal out judgment and death, for the very wise cannot see all in. All right, well, I give Look, the you the Where's your quote at? No, no, that was the closing statement. That was the closing statement. That was the closing statement. We We want to give group one round of applause. Okay. I just want to say one thing. I just want to say one thing. One piece of paper. One pen. Hold on. One piece of paper. One pen. A hot and ready casket. Time for somebody to go night night. Wait a minute. Does not cost two point eight million dollars. Whatever. It don't cost that much. One piece of paper. One pen. Oh. I, why y'all moving them? Oh, y'all need to sit down. Y'all just change seats. Yeah, y'all just change seats. That's why I'm like, what y'all doing? How I stop the recording? You got it off? I got it off. Did it cut off? Did it cut off? I'm for the death penalty if y'all get it to be cheap.